Today's lab is going to be covering Kirchhoff's laws. So I ended last class period by solving a problem with Kirchhoff's laws. I ended the preceding class period with going through the equations for Kirchhoff's laws. So now we're going to be putting Kirchhoff's laws into practice in lab. So you should have five resistors. I only see four here. Okay, so well, we'll have to give you one more. <laughs> we should have five resistors. Um, the one that is 470 ohms, make that resistor one. The rest of them, I don't care what you number them. And I hope you mix them up so not everybody's the same. But we do want resistor one to be the 470 ohm resistor. I'm not going to go through any theory here because we've gone over it, I think, ad nauseum. If you have any questions, you can come back and look at the lab guide. It gives you all the instructions on how to apply Kirchhoff's laws. One thing that you will have at your fingertips, if you don't want to use your calculator, you can use a spreadsheet. Um, so you open the spreadsheet that's in the Biz 151 folder on your laptop. And that spreadsheet um, will do the calculations of current for you. One thing that we're doing that is <clears throat> a little bit problematic is we're using this PASCO current voltage probe, the one that we used last class period. As you noticed last class period, it doesn't make really precise current measurements. What was your uncertainty on current measurements last week? <coughs> Okay, plus or minus 0 0.5 in units of milliamps. So if your currents are on the order of like 5 milliamps or less, your uncertainty is going to be a big difference maker. On the other hand, if your currents are on the order of 30 or more milliamps, then it's not a problem. So we're using fairly low resistance values to try to get the current up a little so that the uncertainty is not much of a problem. Because of that, as a precaution, don't leave the power on for long stretches of time. You know, turn it on when you need to make a measurement and turn it off when you're done. Now, for <clears throat> your actual experiment, I don't think I have a pre-prepared experiment for you. What you're going to need to do, well, you could use the one we used last week, actually, the one we used last, last week would work perfectly for this except for you're not worried about the graphs you're just worried about the numbers but you're going to be using the software and hardware your power supply these will be your power supply and then using this for measuring the voltage and current just like you did last week so um one thing i think another thing we forgot to give you was the wires for measuring the current um, they need actually four wires each. So those are what you're going to use. Now what's different is <laughs> all but one group. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to change it and have um, four groups of three. That way we don't have to go search for the missing one of these. Um, you're going to use a breadboard to make your circuit. The breadboard is designed to make it quick and easy to make a circuit. So if you look at this breadboard, and I should take a picture for the instructions, but I didn't. You have here A, B, C, D, and then you have a big gap, A, B, C, D, E, then a big gap, then F, G, H, I, J. This is designed so that in one row, so if I look at row one, A, B, C, D, and E are all connected together. Row one is not connected to row two at all, and there's no connection between E and F. The spacing is such that you can put a computer chip on here, you know, and then you, well, not the ones like on a computer actually, but a microchip on here, and then you can put wires to connect with different pins. So when you're making the circuits, put your resistors on here, just like in the picture. So if we look at the first circuit you're making, oops, it was on the bottom of that page. It has a power supply, EMF1. What voltage should it be? doesn't matter. 10 volts, 6 volts, I don't really care. 10 volts will give you more current, so it's probably going to give you better results. 
So you can have that power supply. You can just run wires from the power supply to these posts up here. And then you loosen up. There's a hole so you can take a little wire. Uh, I don't know where the little wire is. Oh, they're up here. You can take a wire and stick the wire through the hole in the post. Make sure you do not put the uh, insulation in the wire through the hole because then we'll have insulation not have good contact. And make sure you have better dexterity than I am showing right now. <laughs> Otherwise, you may never finish the lab. No miss. Okay, got it through there. I tighten this down so that I'm pinching the wire against metal. So it'll make good contact. And then this would then allow me to take that one that says ground, and I'm going to connect the one that says ground to this here that has blue. These here are called buses. Where it has the blue line, they're all connected right above it or right beside it. So this one here, each set of five that's right above the blue line is connected together all the way until the blue line ends. Hence, you can make a lot of connections onto that. So there I have my positive voltage and then I put, or my ground and then I put my positive voltage on the red bus. And then I'll take a wire and go from my positive voltage to where I have the first resistor. I don't even remember whose resistor I stole there. Here's the Sir? I think it's ours. It's ours. It's ours. So in that picture, resistor one is horizontal. So I'm going to take resistor one and put it here. And then it has resistors two and three. So just to be consistent, resistors two and three go vertical. And so I'm going to put, okay, got to turn so I can see it. I'm sorry. I'm going to put this from the same row. I'm going to put this going I to I1 to I6 is what I chose. Make sure you push them in so they're <laughs> going through. It has in there pieces of metal like this and you have to push them and it pushes the metal apart. So make sure you push it in so you push that metal apart. So there I have resistor two in and now I'm gonna put resistor three in the same way, just in a different set of holes that are connected. So here I've made the circuit and when you look at it, you say, ah, I know which one's resistor one, and resistor two, and resistor three, because it looks the same as the picture up there. Right? That's the goal with this. You have the breadboard, it makes the circuit, and you can identify things because you lay it out easily. So then I need to connect my, my ground. My ground actually would connect here, and my positive power would connect there, and I'd have my circuit complete. Once you build your circuit, we trust now that you know how to build the circuits and we're not going to come around and check your circuit. You're going to measure the voltage across each thing. So in this I have three resistors plus the power supply. So I'm going to measure four voltages. The voltage of the power supply and the voltage across each resistor. Then I'm going to measure the current through each one. Now when I measure the current, what's the key for measuring the current? It's in series, so I have to break the circuit. Now, some places are easier to break than others. For instance, if I want to measure the current coming out of the power supply, well, I can break it right, you know. Well, make sure you're on the correct side. This here is my ground side, but I can break it on the ground side and put my ammeter so the current arrow goes into the positive on the current meter and comes out the negative, and so I just break the circuit put it in there. For other pieces, like for measuring the current through resistor two, I need to pull out one side of the resistor. So I've broken the circuit. And then because my current arrow, I'm likely going to make the current go down through that, right? You do have the choice. And there's no wrong choice here. But if I choose to make the current go down, then the current should be coming out of this. So I'll go from here to the positive of my voltmeter. So I go, like, hmm. and then I have to just take this, clip it to a little wire, stick that wire in the place that I pulled the resistor out of. Then I've completed the circuit, putting the ammeter in, and I measure the current. Make sure you pay attention to if it's a positive or negative current. Right? Don't just put them all as positive because you might have guessed wrong. 
the second circuit that you're building here, the lower one, you probably can guess right on all but one of those. But current three, it depends on the values of each resistor if it's going left or right. That's so you have to make a guess and you could have a negative or a positive. Because I want you to deal with what happens if I guess the wrong direction and get a negative value for the current, and you're like, great, it's just going the other direction, no problems. So you're going to measure the, the voltages across each resistor, the currents through each resistor, and then you're going to use Kirchhoff's laws to solve this circuit using your actual resistor values. How are you going to know your actual resistor values? <coughs> Actually for today, not through the colors, not with this one that's not working, but with one of the other, they're in there, um, multimeters, or, are they still in here? <laughs> they're in here. <laughs> Thank you for being not as blind as I. Um, you're going to measure the resistances for each one using those. So put down the color code and then measure the resistance and record the resistance with each one. So you'd say R1, color code is blank, blank, blank. Nominal value is this, measure resistance, and that's the value. Of so you're going to solve the circuits, put the equations either into the spreadsheet that's provided for you or your calculator if you're comfortable with it by now to find what the currents should be. And once you've found the currents, then calculate what each voltage is based on those currents, you know, using V equals IR, and compare them to your measured values. If they are not the same, figure out what went wrong. So don't tear your circuit apart until you've compared your measured values with the theoretical values. So you might want to do the theoretical first, then do the measured. I don't care what order you do, but don't take it apart and go to the next one until you verify you got the first one right. And the circuits are designed so the first one is the simpler one to make sure you got it right and have the familiarity before you go to the more complicated one. The second circuit, how many voltages do you need to measure for the second circuit? Six. Six. One for each resistor plus, one for the power supply. How many currents do you need to measure? Conveniently enough, they're numbered. Six. I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, I6. Notice, what resistor does I6 go through? Trick question. Doesn't go through any. Right, that doesn't mean there's no current just because there's no resistor. So you need to measure all six voltages, all six currents, and then you're going to solve the circuit to see what the six currents should have been and the six voltages, and compare your measurements again. They should all agree again, and when they all agree, you're pretty much good to go. Now, there are some questions to help you along the way, so you have to answer these set of questions twice, the going from two to six, once for circuit one and once for circuit two. And so how many unknowns currents does each circuit have? Easy question because I numbered them for you. Um, how many independent linear equations are necessary to solve it? Hmm. What's the relationship between equations and variables? Have to have the same number. How many essential nodes does each circuit have? So you look back and you identify the essential nodes. Remember, essential nodes, let's come to a circuit that you're not doing. Essential nodes are places where two or more wires come together. So in this circuit, 13-1, how many essential nodes do I have? Two, where are they? A and B. There's no A and B marked. Okay, top and bottom, here and here. Right, this is the same place as this. This whole thing is one of the essential nodes. This whole thing is the other essential node. If I had those two essential nodes, how many node equations could I make? One. How many essential nodes on the circuit below? It once again only has two because its essential node is where three or more meet. And those are marked A and B. So your question there is asking you about the essential nodes. And then how many meshes? Going back here, they're both the same. How do you identify the meshes? The smallest possible loops. As I was explaining to another student after class yesterday, it's kind of like looking out the window. 
each window pane is a mesh. So to look out the window, three meshes, three meshes, right? That's what you're looking for. Very simple and quick, easy to identify. So you answer that, how many meshes there are for each one. And then how many linear independent equations can you make? This is using Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. And is that enough? And then you have here a final question that you only answer once. Could you have solved these in a different way? So you look at each one. If so, which one or ones could you have solved in a different way? A different way is something like by simplification. I do not mean, oh, I could have used nodal analysis. I could have used um, mesh analysis. That's not what I mean. I mean using simplification like combined resistors and series, combined resistors and parallel. So that's it for the lab. It, it takes some time because if you make a mistake, well, then basically you've got to spend a lot of time figuring out what you made a mistake on. If you make no mistakes, it should go relatively quickly once you get the hang of making the circuits. So things you all need, you need to get some wires, make sure you return the wires when you're done. Um, you'll need to use one of these for a short time to measure the resistance of each one of your resistors. So these, we only have three of them, you'll have to pass them around. Um, otherwise, everybody needs four wires that Jacob will get you before he leaves. <coughs> Any questions?